With that said, here's a report. Chris Jericho, Claudio Castagnoli for the Ring of Honor title. Great match. Man, they work their buttocks off. And uh, Jericho's, what, 51, 52? Yeah, Bro, something this guy's like working like he's in his, his late 30s, early 40s. This well, dude's doing suplexes off the apron to the floor. He's doing Frankensteiners off the top. He's taking Ricola bombs, which I'd never take. Maybe he shouldn't do all of that, though, because by the time the end of that match was over, he was a little bit slower than Claudio was, and I'm not trying to throw any shade at Chris Jericho wow. at all, but that man, that man was tired. But you look at the condition he's in compared to what he was, you know, I don't know what it was, six months, a year ago. He's a completely new man. So he sure you got to give it to him. He and he's absolutely. the champion of the world of Ring of Honor now. He is. He's got some honor. With that back elbow. This he was, is no honor. This match had impossible heat like i think this was the most heated thing on the show except for when the acclaimed actually won the belts top to bottom start to finish i mean if you're gonna watch one thing on the show watch the whole show but make sure you check this one out as well we had the acclaimed against swerve in our glory and uh i'll just say it first get it out of the way i knew they were not going to be able to top the pay-per-view and when you really think about it I think they should have called an audible at the pay-per-view. Nah. And they could have done the rematch here, and they beat him again. It's not going to hurt, especially because Swerve in Our Glory is almost for sure going to break up. I mean, they, they tease it forever, and then when everything happened with the Hardys and they won the belts, they backed off of it. They made mention of it in commentary again. I think they're breaking up. So, dude, the Acclaim could have got that huge win at the pay-per-view. Have Swerve in Our Glory. Damn it, we want... We're gonna beat. You. We're gonna win our belts back in your hometown. Claim beats him a second time. You get the acclaimed over even bigger. It wouldn't have hurt because you couldn't capture. It was what do they call it? Magic in a bottle. Yeah. You couldn't capture it again. But they had a good match. It was a little clunky here and there, but overall good. Billy Gunn, who was the most over guy, I think of anybody at All Out. He got to hit the fame asser. And he made, he made old Swerve fame ass. Threw him in the ring. They hit their finish and pinned him. The place just erupted. It was, uh, it was great. There was a line. I, I can't remember the exact line by, uh, by Excalibur, but they, uh, they did the scissor me daddy ass. And then they went for the big move. And I forget the word he used, but Excalibur immediately said something like, they erupted. I was like, there's no way you that was an accident. They're teasing FTR, and they claimed, although the gun club showed up first. And uh, it's one of those things where, like, you know, say whatever you want about FTR, but, you know, they're not like superstar Billy Graham. And, uh, the, and <laughs> well, you gotta, you, how are you going to unpack this one here? Well, the gun club showed up and their big argument was you guys have no charisma and we're fountains of charisma. And literally there was nothing in here that gave any evidence. Otherwise a claim just, I mean, FTR just looks at them uh, and away they go. So that, that appears to be next. We had a Wheeler Utah segment with MJF that led to a Ouch. brawl. Ouch. What? <laughs> just because, I don't know if FTR's got no charisma. It's just when you're standing there with the guns, I mean, I mean, look at their father, for heaven's sakes. Not everybody can have, you know, just a ridiculous overflowing amount of charisma, for heaven's sakes. Look at Keith Lee standing next to Swerve. Swerve can suck all the air out of the room if he wanted to. Listen, FTR are unbelievably fantastic tag team wrestlers. But uh, Andrew here who I think was being sarcastic about 97, but I'm, I'm holding him to it. He says, they got geeked by the ass boys. Oh. And if you watch the segment, there's no way to watch the segment and not go, they got geeked by the ass boys. Am I wrong? Well, I'm not wrong. You're probably not wrong, but not good for the ass boys, because once you get in there, your charisma can't do anything if somebody's got your leg behind your ear and choking you out at the same time. So You know uh, about that. You remember when uh, they were in Buffalo or whatever last week and MGF was super over and I said they're in New York and I was like, oh, well, it may as well be uh, six, six continents away from Long Island. Well, here they are in New York still and MGF is over like a god and he's doing everything in his power to get booed 
And somehow he finally got booed there at the end. Gets, gets in a brawl with Wheeler Yuta, and they get separated and everything like that. But uh, let's just see what happens when they're not in the state of New York. Granted, he's probably going to still be over, but once they get out of the state of New York, let's find out if New York is, in fact, New York, or if some of New York doesn't count as New York. Well, I mean, come on now. Crying out loud, Drew McIntyre did a show in, in Wales, and they said he was a hometown guy. Doesn't make it right, okay? And look. This is just going to be something they have to deal with everywhere with MJF. It's going to be on him to turn the crowd against him because no matter where he goes, I don't care if it's in Yonkers. I don't care if it's in Yakima, Washington. It doesn't matter. You're probably right. Get, You're probably right. Coming out. But so let's find out when the they one. go to North Carolina what kind of response this guy gets. Maybe it'll be different. And if it is, I'm really going to go off. <laughs> Diamante. Poor Diamante. So, uh... Well, she's got Tasha. I guess it's not that bad, but... So they do a segment with Diamante, and uh, I'm sure that many of our listeners here know who Trina, the rapper, is, okay? But uh, there are a lot of older folks watching don't, this no, show. No, no, don't no, do No, there are. There are. No, you are the <laughs> same age as I do. Hey, Dom, during the next break, make sure Mike, that you have the Slip stop. and Slide All-Stars stop. on there, okay? Listen to me. Take it to the house. There's a lot of boomers watching the show. And when they do a segment backstage and Diamante reveals <laughs> the original OG from the one whatever. 305. 305. <laughs> and she turns and there's a woman there and she goes, Trina. And that was it. I was like, this is going to be an interesting oh. segment. Because there's gonna be there's gonna be a portion of the audience that are marking out, and then there's gonna be a segment of the audience that are like, "Who in God's name is Tree Na?" <laughs> and by the way, uh, you're gonna hear more about Tree on Friday, but I can't say any more. Mm-hmm. Pac beat Orange Cassidy. It's all right. It wasn't a great match, but they worked hard, and old Orange got his bell rung by the ring bell hammer. He got his pulp squeezed out, pinned. I liked it, but, you know, it was not as good as the first one they had together. Everyone was blown away by. Tony Storm, Britt Baker, Serena D, Athena. Tony Storm retained the title in this four-way. Britt Baker's nose got smashed. She deserved it for having the temerity to be featured on television. Simp. And get a big push while not doing nothing but jobs. Mike Simpervivi. That's going to be my new gimmick. You should simp for simp a little bit more. Not happening. Especially when it comes to my bank Not account. Not happening. Maybe if you, maybe, you know what? Your 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 tire got popped today. Maybe mm-hmm. if you're actual, like, uh, I'm not even going to say. You know, I if, can't if go I any was further. not that was doing too much this even show, for me. then it wouldn't have got popped. That's the whole thing. John Moxie and Brian Danielson was the main event. And uh, you could tell they were a little bit rushed, especially at the end when they were, like, off the air in an instant. But uh, I've said it before. Moxley, Danielson, Jericho. These three men are like, we're just going to go out and we're going to come up with a couple of spots and we're just going to call the rest of them in the ring and beat the absolute piss out of each other. And that's what they did here. And uh, this finish where Moxley catches him in a choke. You know, this John Moxley... This John Moxley was there when I faced Filthy Tom Lawler in that mixed tag. Yes. And I can't help but notice a lot of things I've been seeing lately from him. The chops. The fact that he put on, he put on a rear naked choke, much like I did. And exactly like Tom did, Brian Danielson had a backward roll, or a uh, filthy backward roll his way out. Danielson also, but since Moxley had watched my match, he knew. Oh, listen to this. He knew that when that guy backward rolls out, you got to go with him. And he yeah, did. Guy guy with bad technique he here. got his bad. Talking ba- about somebody else. Are you? I hope your other tire gets popped. But anyway, he held on like I should have. And he flattened him out, he choked him unconscious, and he won. And you know what? 
I felt a little personal satisfaction. But anyway, he's a new champion. He is now a four-time champion, although it was made clear. But it's weird because AW, here's, here's the thing, everybody. When he came out, they listed him as a three-time champion. But he's only a two-time champion. Unless you count the interim championship as a championship. So when he won, he should be a four-time champion. But he's actually a three-time champion, even though he was a three-time... So what am I getting at? Well, when AEW says that John Moxley is a three-time champion, what they mean is two-time AEW, one-time WWE. They're not counting the interim, Okay. So by winning the title, he is now a three-time AEW champion. Right? Yes. I got this wrong? Yes. Yeah, three. Well, yes, you do, two. Well, with the interim, then it's three. Two. No, hold on a second. They said he was a three-time champion coming out last night. Uh-huh. Uh, coming out to the ring. What uh -huh. is this? Yeah, the WWE. So he was a two-time AEW and one-time WWE. Right? So now he's a three-time yeah, he's now a three-time AEW champion. You screwed me up, you idiot. He's a three-time AEW champion and a one-time WWE champion. Okay? I hate you, Dom. You're horrible at your job. But the point is, my point is, they have done graphics where they listed him as a three-time AEW champion before he won. So this needs to be cleared with the people doing graphics as well. The social media team. Yeah. Is that the outro music, Dom? Should I be wrapping this up, or are you just mocking me? Outro, dude. You're an idiot. Back in a moment, Observer Live. This is how the show begins, really. Oz gives a back kick. Camera cut. She does a back fist. Camera cut. She starts to run. Camera cut. She hits a hip attack. Camera cut. She drops to her knees. Camera cut. She throws a kick. Camera cut. She stands up and screams. Camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.